April is National Poetry Month, and Maine's Commissioner of the Department of Education is encouraging everyone to take part. Pender Macon says even people with busy schedules can appreciate the art, and to illustrate it, she highlighted a poem from Mainer Edna St. Vincent Millay. She wrote a poem called First Fig. It's very short. Here it is. My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But ah, my foes and oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. That was her poem, the whole thing, done. Now, uh, because it was so brief, I thought maybe I would write a quick response poem in which I tried to mirror the rhyme and rhythm patterns in, in First Fig. And, and here it is, it's my little ode to Edna St. Vincent Millay. Turns out that lovely light shines on because she gave it rhyme. The poet, not the candle, how the light that outlives time. That was my poem. And a good one. Maine has a long and rich history with poetry. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was a literary sensation in his time. And Henry David Thoreau traveled to Maine for a week's long canoe trip through the woods, which strengthened his idea that identity and place are linked. Almost everything he wrote was this kind of dual connection between who are we and where are you? Where are we? You know, the sense of identity, our connection, and the sense of place. And how do those two things come together? Several years ago, a group called Maine Woods Discovery retraced the writer's journey. Nine paddlers went up Moosehead to Northeast Cary, down the West Branch to Webster Stream, and across the East Branch, then down the Penobscot to Indian Island in Old Town, traveling more than 300 miles in 16 days. Each night, they camped along the water, often reading Thoreau's words. The trip revealed something about him that you may not expect. I'll go ahead and go on record and say he's a bit tougher than I thought. You know, uh, I was like, oh, Thoreau, he's a poet, he's a writer, you know, he likes the woods, that's cool. But being on this trip, it's, uh, it's pretty tough. Thoreau would not have made the trip without the help of Penobscot guide Joe Polis. He wasn't a poet, but Down East Magazine reports that Polis represented the people of Indian Island in Washington and Augusta, and he fought to keep a grammar school on his home island. Now, some poets come to Maine for inspiration. Some poets leave from Maine to share their works with the world. Such was the case of Richard Blanco, the poet from Bethel who spoke at President Obama's first inauguration. We caught up with him a few months ago and find out, found out how he managed to keep his nerves at such a historic occasion. But reasonably composed, I would say, a little, a little nervous. I'm not made of, my nerves aren't made of steel, certainly. But what happens in the inauguration, you feel that there's something larger than yourself. There's something really uh, reverent about it. There's this, I always feel it's like uh, America renews its vows uh, with itself. Uh, it's almost, almost sacred moment. And so your ego goes away a little bit. You realize it's bigger than me. It's bigger than Obama. It's bigger than even Beyonce. Bigger even than Beyonce. The inauguration isn't the only time Blanco has spoken at a state-sponsored event. In 2015, when the Obama administration opened up relations with Cuba, Blanco, whose parents immigrated from Cuba, was invited to speak again. No matter what anthem we sing, we've all walked barefoot and bare soul among the soar and dive of seagulls' cries. We've offered our sorrows and hopes up to the sea, our lips anointed by the same spray of salt-laden wind. Whether here or there, poetry takes work, and that is something Wes McNair knows well. McNair is Maine's fourth poet laureate. He was raised in Vermont and New Hampshire and has always written poetry. McNair first turned to education, but managed to get national attention after the then current U.S. Poet Laureate gave him a favorable review. But while that got him publicity, the poetry came from years of practice, study, and hard work. It isn't as if suddenly the clouds part and a ray of light comes down and illuminates your pen uh, and, and guides it uh, uh, from the top of the page to the bottom, and, and then you have your poem. 
uh, because poetry, I think, doesn't come from the outside. In my experience, anyway, it comes from the inside. The Poet Laureate is a five-year position in the state designed to raise interest and awareness in poetry. The current title holder is Stuart Kestenbaum, who lives on Deer Isle.